Hello, hi. How y'all doing? Brothers and sisters, friends and foes. Hello. Uh, in this video, I am going to be kind of addressing a question that was asked of me. Um, get your King James Bible, the real Bible. Um, a sister asked of me about something around the lines of Jesus ever called the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble. And I referred her on to the two videos of replacement theology that I did. But the, this thing about who are, are there true Jews? The true Jew argument. Um, I'm going to address that. Okay, that is um, that is something that I've noticed has come up quite a bit, and I'm going to tell you straight uh, at the get-go that the true Jew argument um, is kind of can be kind of a stepping stone onto replacement theology. It can be. Some people just don't know about it or um, haven't even, or like, searched the scriptures about it. And um, so in that respect, grace is there to be given on to uh, the brothers and sisters. But um, this thing about, well, we don't know who the true Jews are. We're going to address that. And uh, right away, there is a Jewish brother here on YouTube that I'm aware of. Um, brother, if, uh, if you're still watching me, if you see this, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, being a true Jew who is saved and born again, uh, please feel free to leave your comment, okay? But first, get your King James Bible, the real Bible. Let's, dis uh, let's establish... Uh, the importance of the Jew. Okay? Turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We will read on the ver from verse 1 on to verse 10 in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Go there in the King James Bible, the real Bible. I expect you to follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Okay? Now, very quickly, Deuteronomy is part of the Torah, the first five books of Moses. Okay? Um, a lot of the Hasidim, uh, and the rabbis of the of the Hasidim, when they say Torah, they do not only mean the first five books of Moses. They also encompass the uh, writings of the Talmud and the other books. Okay, but when, for example, when I say Torah, I mean the first five books of Moses. Okay, this is for the Jew. This was written on to the Jew. Okay? Very important for us to establish that before we read this, okay? But, let us read. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 on to verse 10. In your King James Bible, the real Bible. Go there. We begin. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 on to verse 10. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth. The words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. That is a capital R, by the way. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, 
a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. God is just. God is right. God is always right. Always. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot in their spot is not the spot of his children, who are his children, the children of Israel. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is he is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds of the people, okay? Distinction, keeping the people distinct, okay? Let's continue. For the Lord's portion, okay, check this out. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob, who is Jacob? Israel. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He fed him, uh, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. The apple of his eye. Israel the Jew, to this day, is still the apple of his eye. Okay? Now, turn in your King James Bible to Psalm 17. Psalm 17. Psalm 17, we will read from verse 1. Uh, you know what? We will read from verse 1 on to verse 9. Uh, actually, <laughs> we will read verse 1 on to verse 12. Beg your pardon, okay? Psalm 17, verses 1 on to verse 12. Beginning at verse 1. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am proposed that my mouth shall not transgress. <clears throat> Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. <laughs> Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Shew thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee, from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies <laughs> who can pass me about. <laughs> they are enclosed in their own fat, 
with their mouth, they speak proudly. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a little personal bent in me reading that, I will be honest with you. <laughs> they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Now, this is well accepted as a prayer of David. David, king of Israel, a Jew. And as we saw in Deuteronomy, that Israel, Jacob, is the apple of God's eye. Verse 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Okay? The apple of God's eye is still the Jew. Okay? Go to Lamentations now. Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 2. Verse 18. I'm going to read one verse. You can read the context on your own time. Now, the Lamentations of Jeremiah is Jeremiah lamenting over the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay? Over the destruction of Jerusalem. But one verse, okay? Their heart, uh, 18, uh, Lamentations 2, verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord. Who's their heart? The Jews. Their heart cried unto the Lord. O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. First Tuesday of the month, if you can hear that, they let the sirens off around here. Again, verse 18. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Okay? One more reference to the apple of God's eye, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 9. Follow me along, of course. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 9. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Look at verse 8 again. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. The apple of his eye. Now there are those of you out there saying, Well, yeah, Brad, of course, in the Old Testament, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, it's... It was the Old Testament is doctrine for the Jew, right? 
And back in the Old Testament, before the Diaspora, before uh, the Lord spread the Jews abroad, okay, and uh, the four corners of the earth, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, we know that, Brad. Well, wait for it. Let's continue. Go to Luke now. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Verses 44 on to verse 49. Now, what's very important to note about this, about Luke 24, verses 44 on to verse 49, okay? Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He had not yet ascended up into heaven. But Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay? Thus, beginning the New Testament, thus, the time of the Gentiles, or the Christian dispensation. Let's read. Luke 24, verses 44 on to verse 49. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. Okay, now watch this. And that belief and remission of sins, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> beg your pardon, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Are you looking at that? beginning at Jerusalem to the Jew first. Let's see, let's continue. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Yeah. Yeah, look at verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Okay? Jesus Christ offered the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people first. Okay? He went to the rulers, the chief priests, the uh, those, the rulers of the synagogues, okay? He went and offered it unto the Jew first, okay? The Jewish people rejected that. Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Then the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, as you see in the book of Acts, was first primarily offered unto the Jewish people, okay? The spiritual, okay? And in Acts chapter 7, the Jewish people as a nation wholeheartedly rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual. Uh, now, hey, the, um, the disciples at the very first were all Jews, okay? And there were Jews, of course, that did believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and were saved and born again. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's how that went about. The uh, spiritual, the kingdom of God, after the death, burial, and resurrection, was first primarily offered on to the Jews. But by Acts chapter 7, with the stoning of Stephen, they rejected it. And hence, 
it came on to us Gentiles to make the Jew jealous. Okay? Okay? Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verses 26 on to verse 31. Okay? Now, let's get into the arguments about the true Jew debate, or whatever you want to call it. Okay? That's a foundation, a beginning stepping stone, if you will, that could lead people onto replacement theology. Okay? Let's read. Acts chapter 17, verses 26 on the verse 31. Uh, let's see. It's uh, that starts with an and. Let's let's start at verse twenty four, okay? Because if we start at verse twenty six, the flow is kind of messed up. So let's start at verse twenty four on to verse thirty one, okay? Beg your pardon. Acts seventeen verses twenty four on to verse thirty one. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Go ahead and wrap your head around that one for a little bit. Okay, let's continue. Neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And hath made, okay, now pay attention. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. Now let's just dissect this a little bit, okay? And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Guess what? You and I, we have blood in our veins. If you cut my skin and I cut your skin, Regardless of your ethnicity, what color is the blood going to be? It's going to be red. Okay? I know there's type O, type AB positive or whatever, but blood is blood. Blood is blood. Okay? So when he says right here, and hath made of one blood, all nations. Okay? Okay? Like I said, you come over and bop me in the nose, and I bop you in the nose, the blood that's going to come out of our nose is going to be red. That's what that means. Okay? In verse 26, picking up, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Distinction. Separation. God is a God of distinction. Okay? Of distinction. All right? Some of you don't like to deal with that. But God is a God of distinction. God is a God of variety. Um, another example. There are many types of dogs, but they're all dogs. And those dogs have one blood, but there are many types of dogs, right? Okay? God likes variety. God likes distinction. 
some of you are going to have to deal with that. But let's continue. From verse 27. That they should seek the Lord. If haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Offspring, excuse me. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device, graven images. Okay, let's continue. And at the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to believe, because, <coughs> uh, excuse me, beg your pardon, uh, verse 30 again, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Okay? Okay? Where was that again? Verse 26. Look at verse 26 again. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Distinction. Separation. Okay? Okay? Listen, brethren, sisters, friends, foes. Bringing everybody together as one humanity, as that horrific black pope recently did of uh, did something on that Brother Brian Denlinger uh, uploaded on his channel. Okay, bringing everybody together and removing ethnicity. Culture, that distinction. Is God for that? Uh, verse 26 And hath determined and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, their boundaries, separation. Distinction, variety. God is a God of variety. But now let's go to 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, we don't know who the true Jews are. We don't even know if there are any true Jews, right? But yet we saw in Acts about how he set the bounds of their habitation, okay? We're talking as far as ethnicity, okay? Not salvifically. Don't worry, we're going to get to that. But ethnically, ethnicity. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 30 on to verse 33. Go there, of course. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 30 on to verse 33. Please feel free to read the context on your own time. Okay? Let's go. 
verse 30 on to verse 33 in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. That they may be saved. So, note in verse 32, okay? Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles. And look at that little thing right there. Nor to the church of God. The church of God. Hinge this verse. Hinge this verse. Verse 32. Okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hinge that in your brain because we're going to come back to it. Okay? Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 3 on to verse 6. Okay? 1 Corinthians, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 6. Give no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in affliction, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. By love unfeigned. Okay? Go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. And 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 6. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, <laughs> in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. First Corinthians 10, verse 32 again. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Romans, chapter 1. Romans, chapter 1. Romans, chapter 1, verses 16, on to verse 17. Go there. Of course, of course. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. What is a Greek? A Gentile, right? Right? Not your head. Okay, let's continue. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith 
to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay? You see there in verse 16, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Ethnically, there can be distinction made between who is truly Jewish and who is truly Gentile. Okay? Ah, but go to Romans 2, verses 17, on to verse 29. Romans chapter 2, verses 17, on to verse 29. Okay? Let's go. Go there. Come on. Now, those who like to say, well, we don't know who the true Jews are. We don't know if there are any true Jews. Question. I'm a Gentile. My, uh, a majority of my um, blood, or whatever you will call it, is Spanish. I am primarily a Spaniard. And yes, to all you, my foes, yes, Spain is the nation famous for Ignatius of Loyola. So, so because uh, I have primarily Spanish blood, that, <laughs> that must mean I'm a Jesuit. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Be beg your pardon. <laughs> I, 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 ha I had to throw that out there. <laughs> okay, Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 29 to close out the chapter. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light to them which are in darkness, an instructor, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Okay? Now, he is obviously addressing who? Okay? This is Time of the Gentiles Christian Dispensation Doctrine. Okay? But he is making a point about those who are teaching the law. And who are the teachers of the law? The Jews. Okay? So let's continue. Verse, from verse 21 now. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, uncircumcision, meaning Gentiles, okay? Uh, I did a whole video uh, about uh, that I touched on um, circumcision, okay? The um, debunking the lie of faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. 
Go ahead and have fun critiquing that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You go. Knock yourself out. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. Now, where were we? Okay. Verse 26. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law? Now right here, right here, right here is where they will go, verses 28 on to verse 29. To say, well, and, uh, oh, don't worry, we're going to be looking in Galatians and Colossians. Don't worry, we'll get there. But this is another place where they will go, okay, to prove that, well, who are the true Jews? Okay, let's go. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. You know, the circumcision made without hands. Okay? That's why we can eat poke today. Okay? Let's continue. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and that circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, in the letter, referring to the Old Testament law, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now, Question, again, I'm not Jewish. Am I supposed to be Jewish because I believe on Jesus Christ? No, 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 no. Salvifically, we are all one in Christ. Jesus. But as far as ethnicity, uh, I'm not Jewish. See, the differences between we're talking about salvifically and ethnically, your ethnicity. Okay? Now, go to Romans 11. Okay? Romans 11, look at verse 29 in Romans chapter 2 again. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Romans chapter 11, verses 11 under verse 24. Okay? Romans 11, verses 11 under verse 24. Now see, hyper-dispensationalists will say that Romans 9, 10, and 11 are written on to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's read. Romans 11, verses 11 under verse 24. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall, meaning the Jews? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak on, for I speak to you Gentiles, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, Paul was a Jew. Ethnically, look at that verse so far. 
if by any means I could provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. My flesh. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, let's, let's finish this verse first. And might save some of them. Oh, I, oh, I feel you. I feel you. Romans 2, verses 28 on to verse 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Go back to Romans 11, verse 14. If by any means I might provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. See, there is a distinction between one who is a Jew salvifically, meaning we're all one in Christ Jesus. And there is a difference between a one who is a true Jew or of the flesh, ethnically Jewish. Okay? Let's continue, though. Let's continue. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, hmm, beg your pardon, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, hi, us Gentiles, wert grafted in among them, and, are you looking at that? Are you looking at that? Huh? And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Let's read that part again. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Let's continue. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Okay? Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. But fear. See, we have been grafted in, made one with the Jew, salvithically. Okay? Salvithically. Ethnically, I am not a Jew. Okay? I believe on their God, their Lord and Savior. Okay? My God, my Lord, my Savior, my Father, Jesus Christ. Okay? In that, we are one. In that, there is no distinction. But ethnically, as far as, you know, the sagging skin suit, there is a distinction. Okay? There is. There is. Let's continue. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee 
goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Okay? So see, going about saying, well, we don't know who the true Jews are, are we don't know if there are any true Jews. Salvithically, salvithically, there's neither Jew nor Greek. But ethnically, ethnicity, there are true Jews. Yes. Now let's get let's go to where you have all been waiting for. Okay? Galatians. Galatians, come on, fingers work with me. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 on to verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 on to verse 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Salvithically. Okay? Salvithically. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. Okay, now go back to Romans 11. Okay. Romans 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Go back to Galatians, verse 28. Uh, in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seeds, seed, excuse me, and heirs according to the promise. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that we put the kipper on and start acting Jewish. No. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay? That does not mean that we abandon our ethnicity. Okay? That that doesn't mean that at all. Okay? Not at all. And let's go now to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. Excuse me. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. 
If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your, our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God is come, uh, excuse me, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Okay? Now, verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay? We're all one in Christ Jesus. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. We are all one in Christ, salvifically. Okay? Now, about this, go to 1 Timothy 1, okay, 1 Timothy 1, verses 3 on to verse 11, okay? Now, here are some of the some more of the arguments that they will bring up. Beg your pardon, brethren, I'll beg your pardon. All right, sorry about that, brethren. All right, let's go now to 1 Timothy Chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 11. The thing about endless genealogies comes up. Well, okay. Okay, Brad. If we're all one in Christ Jesus, and there's neither Jew nor Greek salvifically, but you're saying that Ethnically, there are true Jews. How do we go about to prove it? People will often bring up, well, the endless genealogies. They talk about endless genealogies. Let's answer that. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 11. We begin. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Endless genealogies. The endless genealogy thing was coming. Well, let's read. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and the faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside on the vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law. Very key right there. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. 
nor whereof they affirm. So, look at verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. And then look at verse, uh, where, where was that? Verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law. Again, who were the teachers of the law at this time? It was the Jewish people. And the genealogies, uh, who were the ones who were supposed to instruct the children of Israel? The Levites. Right? Right? The Levitical priesthood, you know? And the genealogies was there as to qualify these people as teachers of the law. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, the gospel that we preach today was revealed unto Paul, unto the Jew first, and also unto the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay, so right there in verse 4, when you see endless genealogies, it's in reference to verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law. In order to be a teacher of the law, you had to prove through genealogies. Okay? All right. And there's another reference to that, of course, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verses 8 unto verse 11. Titus chapter 3, verses 8 unto verse 11. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God, that they which, which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions, and look at this, and strivings about the law. Bringing people under the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition Reject. Hi. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned, being condemned of himself. Yeah. Yeah. So see, we are, we are not to get into genealogies. And I'll tell you what. Uh, there are some uh, beloved Jewish people out there who will get into their genealogies, okay? And for their own, you know, for their families, that per se is not a bad thing. But see, when it's mentioned here in the scripture about the genealogies, note that, okay? Note that, all right? But... Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. Okay, and now go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do. And look at verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law 
understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Okay, so you see in the scriptures when the genealogies are there and mentioned, it's always a mention. It, it, it's linked within those who are teaching the law. Okay. We are not to get involved in endless genealogies. Salvifically, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay? You as a saved Jew, you do not have to give us the rundown of your genealogy to prove that you are a Jew. Okay? We are all one in Christ Jesus. You being a Jew, truly saved and born again. Okay? Ethnicity, as far as your ethnical ethnicity, to prove you're Jewish, go ahead. Then go ahead. Okay, salvifically, salvifically. Again, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male or female. Okay, and about that, um, if there's no distinction at all, it says that there's neither male or female. What are we, a bunch of hermaphrodites or something? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But when they when they will bring up as an argument about who the true Jews are, the endless genealogy thing comes up. But the verses that talk about that are linked here in context to those who are trying to bring people under the law. And keep them in bondage. That kind of thing. Okay? Now, go to James. Chapter 1. One verse. Okay? Now, is there any place where you can definitely say that today, in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation, that over there, the, the complete tribe of Judah is there. Or over there, the complete tribe of Naphtali is over there. No, God has spread his people abroad into the four corners of the earth. Okay? There are, there are synagogues in Iceland, as I understand it. Okay? God is bringing his, has brought his people back to Israel in 1948. You know, in accordance with prophecy, I also have a video addressing that. Uh, Israel 1948, what was God doing? Okay. But, but, the distinct 12 tribes themselves, the distinct 12 tribes themselves are still dispersed. Okay? If you're Jewish, why aren't you going back to Jerusalem? Addressing those who are calling themselves Jews and are not. Okay? But, there are Jews all over the earth. Like I said, in Iceland. There are synagogues in Japan. Okay, there is a Jewish community, excuse me, a Jewish congregation in Japan. Okay, well, how do we know they are true Jews? Well, ethnically, you can trace their genealogies back, and they do. Ben Israel, if you make it this far, if you're still watching me, is that not the truth? Right? Go ahead and leave the comment. Okay? But, is there going to come a time when the 12 tribes are going to be distinguished and known and marked? One verse in James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, Greeting. James 1 verse 1 shows to who the book is written to. The book of James is written unto the Jews. Okay? And it says to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Okay? In a collective sense. But 
like I said, can you point to one specific area on the earth where there's the tribe of Judah, or there's the tribe of Benjamin, or there's the tribe of Levi, or Simeon, or Naphtali? No, the 12 tribes are scattered abroad. Okay? Okay? And ethnically, a Jewish man or woman can trace their genealogy to prove if people are that vain that they are in fact Jewish. And Jewish families of themselves, okay, even those that do not practice any form of religion per se, can trace like, okay, their ancestors here in America uh, land, uh, came uh, from Ellis Island in New York, okay, and from there on and there on and there on, okay? Okay? There are true Jews. Salvithically, we are all one in Christ. Ethnically, I'm a saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian, but I'm not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Okay? Finally, go to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Verses 7 on to verse 13. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 13. Now, in the book of Revelation, right here, the catching away is signified in the book of Revelation in chapter 4. Okay, that's when we get caught up, the body of Christ, which is comprised both of Jew and Gentile, ethnically. Salvifically, we are all one, okay? But note something. Revelation 3, verses 17 on to verse 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Let's stop right there. It's the son of David. You hear that Jesus is referred to as son of David. Okay? David was not his daddy. Joseph was not his daddy. Okay? Okay? When a Jewish man or woman refers to Jesus Christ as the son of David, that is them acknowledging his role and title as king of the Jews. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he is going to be ruling and reigning on the throne in Jerusalem as King of the Jews, Lord of Lords, uh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He will be ruling as the Son of David, meaning King. Okay, so when a Jewish man refers to Jesus as, or a Jewish woman, excuse me, refer to Jesus as Son of David, that is a Jewish man or woman acknowledging him as King. Okay, because the one parable where the rich young ruler goes up to Jesus and says, good master, what should I do? You know, what shall I do to inherit eternal, eternal life? I'm paraphrasing, just butchering, beg your pardon. But then the one beggar guy says uh, in a crowd, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He stops because there was a beggar acknowledging Jesus as king. And at that time, before the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus as king was offering the kingdom onto the Jews. And when a Jewish man or woman, especially at that time when Christ was walking on the earth, acknowledged him as king, 
an Israelite, indeed, in, in whom there is no guile. Okay? I realize that he said that of Nathaniel. Okay? But I, ha I had to address that. Okay, let's continue. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Now here is where some twisting goes on. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I, will also, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man... Take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. There are those out there who like to say that the Jews run everything. That the Jews are evil. A truly saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian Um, defends the Jews, defends Israel's right to the land that they have and their right to possess and own the land. Okay? There are some evil, wicked Jewish people out there. Yes, there are. Okay? But see, those who are truly anti-Shemitic will go to this and say it's the synagogue of, uh, of Satan. So see, it's the Jews that world uh, rule the world. It's a, the Jews. It's a Zionist conspiracy. No. Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits rule this world, are being allowed to rule this world. Okay? They are the ones who are in control of everything. They have put the Jews in... Uh, uh, Jewish people working with the Vatican is, oh boy, oh boy. But anyway, there are some Jews who work with and alongside the Vatican, unfortunately. Okay? Like in the one uh, documentary that I've seen on several channels and which I have in a playlist, uh, one guy said, uh, about uh, former Pope uh, Ratzinger, uh, Ratzinger, or whatever his name was, Pope Benedict, he said, you don't invite the Grand Inquisitor to Israel. You just don't do it. You know? You just don't do it. But those who are truly anti-Semitic will go to here and say, it's, see, it says the synagogue of Satan. So it's the Jews, it's the Jews. And note this here, okay? Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Who are the true Jews? Who are the true Jews? We don't know. You know who, now let me put this into your ear. The Roman Catholics, Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits, they are not actually calling themselves Jewish. But Roman Catholicism teaches replacement theology, that the time of Jacob's trouble is not the time of Jacob's trouble, but the time of the church's trouble, that the time of uh, the Great Tribulation, as they would call it, okay, which is a description, not a title, okay, the time of Jacob's trouble, 
they say it's for the purification of the church. Hence, replacing Israel. So, in that sense, Roman Catholicism, even though they do not say we are Jewish, they hate the Jews. All of you Jewish people, we truly saved born-again King James Bible-believing Christians are not your enemies. Your greatest enemy as a Jew is Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and her army, the military army, the Jesuits. Okay? Roman Catholicism is your enemy. Roman Catholicism wants to replace you. And as we have already looked and sh we have seen that the Jew is still the apple of God's eye, and that salvifically there is neither Jew nor Greek, but ethnically there are true Jews. There are true Jews. Absolutely there are. So, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say there are Jews and are not. Replacement theology. Replacing the Jew. Again, Roman Catholics do not verbally say, we are Jews. No, they do not say that. But they teach that the Great Tribulation is for the purification of the Church. They seek to replace you. Hence, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth is trying to convince everybody and is doing a pretty good job on some accounts are trying to say that the church is the apple of God's eye not you the Jewish people you see you see Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Synagogue of Satan, that say they are Jews and are not. Also to the black Hebrew Israelites, who say they are Jews and are not? Or the lost tribe that's in Europe? Uh, I forget what they call that. The, there's a lost tribe that's in Europe. The Europeans the, uh, are, the, uh, are the true Jews. Or as Stephen Anderson says, you know, that the church have replace the Jews, that the church are the true Jews. Slippery slope, better be careful. Now, after the body of Christ is taken away, Roman, uh, Romans, Revelation 7, verses 1 on to verse 8. Revelation 7, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on, the, or, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed, and they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of 
Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. 12, of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Now see, these 144,000 Jews, okay? These, during the time of Jacob tro uh, Jacob's trouble, they are sealed. These Jews will have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because they are sealed. Look at the verses above. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And then you read, what two tribes, by the way, were not mentioned? Dan and Ephraim. That's a different story, okay? Let's continue reading this. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, nor thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. These Jews, in the Verses 7, uh, 1 on the verse 8 are sealed. And they will not take the mark of the beast. Because they have sealed their God in their foreheads. Okay. Brethren, sisters, friends, and foes. This true Jew argument. Oh, we don't know who the true Jews are. I don't know if there's any true Jews. That is a stepping stone onto replacement theology. Salvifically, we are all one in Christ Jesus, yes. But ethnically, there are true Jews. You have to be, that's the distinction, okay? Salvifically, there is no distinction. Ethnically, there is. Okay? Okay? And when people start doing stuff like, 
well, we don't know who the true Jews are. How do we distinguish the true Jews? Oh, there was no Holocaust. Those little subtle things will lead, lead on to replacement theology. And those things are warning signs. Now, like I said, some don't know. Some have never searched the scriptures about it. Some don't like, oh, yeah, well, yes, yeah, salvifically. Yes, yes, there is a difference. Salvifically and ethnically, yes, there is. Salvifically and ethnically, okay, yes. Some don't know that. That's what this video is for. But when you got people who are um, blurring that line and then go to denying the Holocaust, and very quickly about the Holocaust, I have said in my one video, uh, the Holocaust part one, six million. I, we really don't know the true number of how many of the Jewish people were exterminated. I personally believe it is well above six million. I really do. Okay. But see, there are those out there who say, oh, it's probably more like 250,000. And another area of replacement theology of, you know, which is a part of, you know, Holocaust denial, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, well, there were many other Holocausts making light of, replacing. Okay. So, sister, this was a little long-winded. I hope this answered your question. Um, thank you. Thank you to my brothers and sisters. I love you so much, and I'm praying for every single one of you. And for friends, and even to you, my foes, my bitter enemies. You, you a little mad there, bro? I'm praying for you too. So y'all have a good one and go ahead and have fun with this video. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I love you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever or whenever that may be. Okay? Love you.